So today we're going to talk about uh, working with the five different generations in our workforce today. Okay? Let's start out by looking at who's actually in today's workforce. Let's start out today by looking at who's in today's workforce. Um, we have employers today have access to unprecedented um, opportunities with today's workforce. For the first time in history, five generations are actually working together. So, who's who are we working with? Baby Boomers, Baby Boomers Two, Generation X, Gen Y, also known as the Millennials, and Gen Z. So. Gen Z, our newest generation, is uh, coming into the, entering the workforce, and they're not only joining their parents in the workforce, they may also be joining their grandparents in the workforce. So that's, that hasn't happened yet. We find ourselves working with these five generations because boomers are tending to work longer, okay? We have, for over 30 years, the boomers have, uh, just by their sheer size, have dominated the workforce and have created a majority rules culture. Well, that culture is shifting now. Gen X, Gen Y are now dominating the workplace. Okay, and that makes up our largest group of, group of employees right now. And they are asking for very different needs. They have very different wants than the previous generation. So this is what our biggest groups want from us. Gen Xers, they want 401k and they want health care coverage. Gen Y, they're a very social group. So they're saying, why don't you fund my LinkedIn account? Why don't we have happy hours that are, uh, that are company sponsored happy hours and social events? <laughs> So do you know how to work with these different sets of employees? You have to ask yourself, what is different about them? How do you attract younger workers while at the same time retaining your experienced employees? That's a key, key question. But being good communicators and having the ability to bring these generations together um, to achieve company goals, it will be the key to, to your success. It's that simple. So, are your supervisors and managers ready? Are you preparing your leaders? Do they know how to manage people who are hyper-connected and used to rating everything and everyone in their lives? And can they manage older employees who may have 15 or 20 or more years experience than they do? So, supervisors have a unique experience right now. They're dealing with the Gen X, that's coming in. They're 18, 19, 20 years old, okay? Just new to the workforce. And they're also have people reporting to them that may have been in working for that company maybe 30 years, okay? So, I think when I turn my slide here, this turns to So facts about each generation. To help us know how to work with the different generations, um, you have to know where they are coming from. And so you may be surprised about what I'm about to tell you. So the next several slides are actually facts about each generation. So boomers, they are less than 1% of our US workforce, okay? They are team oriented, they are the most engaged group, and they lead with what's called a command and control style. So that's, that's just because that's what they've known in the past. That's how they were taught. And sometimes they tend to lead with fear, okay? They also are okay with face-to-face -face interaction, but they communicate more, more comfortable with communicating more formally. And that's what used to be letters and memos, and now has become emails. 
more about the boomers. They are the last generation that is going to work for a company for their entire career. They don't, they expect respect for their experience and they don't, just don't presume that they're frozen in their mindset though. One of the attributes about boomers is that they have the ability to not sweat the small stuff. Boomers too, they make up 18% of our workforce, but our numbers are dwindling. They are retiring by the thousands daily. Um, and but many can't afford can't afford full retirement, so they tend to take part-time work, or they tend to ask to continue working maybe on a contract basis with you. They are an optimistic group. They want to be a part of something. They want to be a part of something important important projects, important groups. They, their key attribute is they have a knack for questioning authority while simultaneously being authoritative. <laughs> this group is both our co-workers and our leaders. So Gen X. Gen X makes up 34% of our US workforce. At the height of their employment, they were the smallest group and will never actually have a majority in the workplace. They were the first latchkey kids, experiencing both parents wanting or needing to work outside the home. Our society changed as this group was growing up and making this a group a product of that change and unrest in their families. They want to communicate directly with their leaders and make them skeptical of authority. So this generation is a little bit different than others because they have a tendency to want to work alone, okay, and their preference, um, and they have a very independent. They want a good boss who gives them the opportunity to learn something and appreciate being valued for their efforts. A sincere appreciation and thanks for the work that they've been doing for you is all that they're really asking for, the Gen X group. So the thing that gives them, so their attribute is that they are our bridge builders between the baby boomers and the next generation. So. Gen Y, oh my, right? <laughs> they make up 45% of our workforce. It's huge. That's almost 50% of us working today are the millennials. Well, this generation are, are the idealistic multitaskers to the nth degree. There's a lot of them that work here at Hedberg, and we appreciate it. They do tend to be overconfident due to affirming highly involved parents and don't mind delaying leaving the nest until they're nearly 30. You think about the Affordable Care Act, they're on the parent's health plan until they're 26. So they're not being encouraged really to leave that. And they're friends with their parents, so they're not encouraging them to leave either. So this is a whole different generation. They're friends with them, as I said. It, and so they're used to that direct interaction with their parents and it's kind of what they expect from us too. So millennials continue. They are told that they can expect a work-life balance with a good salary. So that's what they've been told. They have a healthy aversion to cumbersome structure. They are the ones that question the task and what they're asked to do before just jumping in to do it. They, have, they do have a reputation for being sponges though. They live to work and not, they, they work to, see that's my thought, right? I live to work. They work to live and not live to work. So they are most a gener, maligned generation. And so I've dedicated 
a few slides and I show those to you in a few minutes just to the, to the millennials because we really need to understand where they're coming from. So Gen Z, our great hope, did they just come into the workforce? They just make up 2%. Our newest generation, is, as they start to join, they're returning to our roots, or what we call our roots. They're not necessarily attending or interested in attending a four-year college. They're interested in technical and trade schools, boiler operators, carpenters, welders, people like that. And that's perfect because our skilled labor force is leaving the market. So this is good timing for these, guys, for these people to come and start joining our workforce. So because of social media, if you were to say anything negative about this group, because of social media, they have large networks of friends, but not much job experience. So employers, what employers can do with these large networks is to really um, tap into them and try and find more like-minded workers like them. So this generation has a similar set of values to their boomer grandparents. They have a strong commitment to social responsibility. They enjoy participating in structured groups. They're used to collaborative discussions. Gen Z's make us hopeful for the future of the workforce because they represent some of the best of each previous generation. They are very young and need guidance and insight, but they are very, very open to it. So the misunderstood millennials. As I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna spend a few minutes talking about them. There's a lot of pages for them. So, what do millennials want? They actually want what everybody else wants, but they have the guts to ask for. That's that's it in a nutshell. So we look at them, uh, you know, sometimes and just go, wow, you know, because they they they're saying what we what we want to say. They are an affirmed generation. They're raised to believe they can do whatever they want, and that they have the skills and abilities that they need to take into the into the job market. But if they're actually lucky to get a job, remember, 45% of our workforce is made up with these millennials. They're told, you really don't have any experience yet. You know, they're just out of college. So a lot of, for a lot of them, this is a tremendous clash. This is a tremendous clash with the, what they've been told and what they've been taught and what reality is. One of the good things about the millennials is they are a non-conflictual generation. They do want to get along in the workplace. So, millennials know that they need to have a competitive edge because there are so many of them. From their managers, they're asking not only for the, is this stuff that I have here, they have, they're saying, give me straight feedback sponsor me for development programs. I want you to be comfortable with, with me having a flexible work schedule. From their company, they're saying, this company that I work for has to have strong values. Allow me to blend work with the rest of my life. Customize benefits and rewards for me. They're asking to, be, to learn more. So with that, they're saying, teach me leadership skills. They know they're coming right out of college. They're saying, show me how to self-manage and be a productive contributor. Show me creative and innovative strategies that you have learned and practiced. This group is huge, and they are asking us to help them navigate the workplace. So, the millennials, they want a lot, but they'll give us a lot. They want career pathing, flexibility, 
and the opportunity to learn. In return, they will give us their undivided attention for a while. <laughs> So, we talked about all the different generations. We talked about the boomers, boomers two, Gen X, Gen Y, our millennials, and Gen Z. So how do we use this general and generational information? Well, as managers, supervisors, and owners, it's really up to us. The work is ours. The happiness and productivity or stressfulness or challenges of this multi-general workforce is up to you and, the, and, the, um, and what you create at your company. It's, it's our job to help employees recognize from each other that they each have distinct sets of skills and bring different things to the table. So what should employers do? What can you do to encourage employees of different generations to share their knowledge? Well, first, don't allow a lack of respect based on generational differences. By this, I mean recognize, as I said before, that we each bring good points to the table, even millennials. And people, and I, I, I mention millennials over and over again because when I've talked to, you know, to managers, to supervisors, they always say, oh, the millennials. Well, you know, they really don't want to be called millennials, so maybe we'll say Gen Y. Um, but everybody has something to bring to the table and to do that. So study your employees. Create opportunities for mentoring across the generations, and I'll talk about what we're doing here at Headwork in a minute. So it's smart to have young people and old people or older people working together they don't see each other as a competition like they do um, from their peers in their, in their own group. Leverage your employees. Studies show that we learn more from each other than we do from formal training. We all conduct training you know, at, at our companies. We might offer some classes. We do that here at Hedberg, and they're valuable. But what I'm finding valuable is when, when, like yesterday, we had a conflict resolution training class for our supervisors. Fantastic, because it wasn't about slides. It wasn't about, you know, just me reading things to them. It became a collaborative effort. It was just, it was just a round table of discussion. And we bounced ideas off each other. Some of the people that were in that meeting are here today. And hopefully you guys found value in it and what we talked about yesterday. But that's what I'm talking about. Formal training is good, but learning from each other is probably more important. We have something to learn from younger people, and they have something to learn from us. So this is our new reality, these five generations. Companies have access to incredible array of skills right now, more than ever before. Understanding what these generations bring and what's important to them will help you be successful. You must have collaboration, collaborative employees. It's that simple. So further, think of millennials, our largest workforce, as pushing for change that all generations want to see happen. All employees want to feel valued. They want to feel empowered. They want to feel engaged. They want to feel appreciated. So if an employee asks themselves, am I continuing to learn and grow? How your employees answer this question will be your competitive advantage or not in attracting, developing, and keeping talent. As Matt mentioned before my, my presentation, that was the hardest thing that we all dealt with last year. Here at Hedberg, we got some employees in, and then they were gone. You know, it was a little bit like squirrel, you know? I mean, they were gone. When we bring people in, we want to keep them here because we've taken the time to interview them, we've taken the time to train them, all those things that it requires to bring people on board. We wouldn't have hired them if we didn't want them to stay here with us, right? 
So, am I continuing to learn and grow? One of the most important statements. Okay? The employee's going to ask themselves that. What am I getting from here? From, from Hedberg? From your company? What are they getting? So, we have to think in different ways. We have to leverage innovative learning methodologies, such as reverse mentoring and peer-to-peer -peer learning. We're rolling that out at Hedberg this year, in 2019. Innovative learning methodologies, reverse mentoring, that's, that means a younger person mentoring an, old person, old, an old, older worker. They might, I know for me, well, Dee had to come up here and help me get started. So, like that. I mean, there's things that we can teach each other. I don't know everything. He doesn't know everything. But we're learning from each other. So, remember the generational motivators that we talked about. Younger workers want work with new experiences and opportunities. 30 to 40 year olds have families, homes, need flexibility, money, and advancement. Older workers, as they begin to transition out of, the, out of the workplace, they still want to feel valued and they still want to participate in interesting work. So what shouldn't we do? Definitely don't segregate or, or separate same generation employees and put them all on projects thinking, oh, this would be a good project because they're young, they're thought, you know, they think for well, life they're going to come. It's good to interject older workers with younger workers on projects. You're going to get better results. Also, we need to listen. Listen to employees and listen often. Don't presume you know how to motivate employees who are older or younger. Their needs and wants are going to be very different than yours. What else should employers do? Don't dwell on stereotypes. Oh my God, boomers are never retiring. They're mystified by social media. Gen Xers are out for themselves. Millennials will never commit. And Gen Z, they got their phone behind here, right? You ask them a question, they're like, hmm, well, we go here. Huh? Maybe? So, Despite all of our differences, these things are the most important to all of us. People want to feel respected and to be heard. We have to create opportunities for coaching and mentoring. Okay? They want to understand and be a part of the big picture. Okay? Your employees want open communication. They want constructive feedback. They want to talk to you in a reciprocal manner. They want to exchange ideas with you. So all those generational differences I talked about, we still all want these things. So what is Hedberg doing to address these things? We are doing With Hedberg, we have an open door policy. Employees can and should feel that they can come and talk to us at any time. We are collaborati collaborating with employees by meeting with them and we're getting their feedback. We have created new training programs and we encourage employees to give us ideas about what they want. I think we are moving in the right direction. Employees feel like they can ask questions. We have improved our culture by letting employees know that they have been hired for one role, but that doesn't mean they have to stay there. We've created a career path opportunity for them as well. And I'm going to we have put in place a consistent and regular performance management program. We have created, created career pathing programs for employees at all stages of their career. They don't have to come into this company, into Hedberg, maybe at City Desk, maybe in the yard, 
and saying, well, this is my job, that's where I'm staying. No. You come into, it, come into Hedberg and you can go anywhere. And that's the way we want people to feel. We created these programs. We created a mentoring program. I want to mention that. We have matched up, actually, in just recently, and this week we're going to launch three more uh, career paths for employees. We have created a mentoring program. We have matched up longer serving employees with some of our new supervisors. So people that have just come into the supervisor role, or maybe they just have been in a supervisor role and just need a little bit more guidance, we've set them up with um, long-serving uh, mentors. And we also have some peer-to-peer -peer mentorship to encourage collaboration. So that is su two supervisors at the same level working together. So in that case, it's kind of good to have them They're working together. So, in summary, be good communicators and bring these generations together to achieve your company goals and you'll be successful. Gen X are bridge builders. Leverage them. They, put together, they, they can speak to the boomers and they know how to interact with the younger groups. The, the millennials and the Gen X, or the Gen Zs. Create a collaborative work, workplace. Pair younger employees with more experienced employees. Let them learn from each other. Take advantage of the skills and knowledge you have available with these five generations. So when you can, create teams and partnerships to work together to achieve their best results. Create meaning, meaningful and valuable programs to fit your employees' needs. What we do here fits Hedberg's needs and our employees' needs. We've asked them for feedback, so we're, we're fulfilling our needs. Your needs might be different. Mentorship program might not be important to your employees, but I bet it is. Give honest, constructive, and consistent feedback. Communicate openly and listen. Listen to your employees, ask them for what they want. If you want to retain your employees, that's the key. So I'm going to open it up to questions. Anybody have any questions? What are some of the methods of recruiting that have worked best? So I didn't hear what that What means. are some of the methods of recruiting that have worked best? Oh, for recruiting, well, for us, it isn't necessarily the, um, I'm going to give you an example for um, the stone fabrication. That has been one of the most difficult roles to fill here. It's a skilled labor job. So who do we fill those roles with? Our Gen Z people. They were interested in taking that job, okay? So the way we did that, yes, we did career fairs. That's the way you're going to get at people that have that are looking for skilled labor jobs. They are not going on Indeed and ZipRecruiter. They are reading the paper. They are um, looking at maybe Star Trek Online. They are going to career fairs. So we have found that, you know, for some of those skilled labor jobs, that's the best way to fill those. To fill some of the other jobs, for example, um, sales, the salespeople do use ZipRecruiter, do use Indeed. So, a couple of different ways to do that. Any other questions? Yeah, Keith. Uh, you mentioned Gen Zers are starting to get into more of the trade type of jobs. Yeah. I was wondering the question I was kind of going the opposite direction. How, what is there more trade uh, schools being brought up or more involvement? So actually, Gen Zers are more interested in those kinds of in those kinds of uh, uh, trade uh, trade uh, careers. So the programs that are being developed at colleges they're 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 expanding actually. So um, they're just not finding that they're as interested as I mentioned earlier. 
I, I hope I mentioned this earlier. The attention span of the Gen Zers, because of social media, the quick nature of social media, their attention span is a little bit shorter, uh, quite a bit shorter. So they 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 might enroll in a four-year college, but they don't stay typically for the full four years. They drop. They said, you know what? I'm I'm not so interested in learning economics. I'm not so interested in getting a marketing degree. I'm actually interested in working. And how is that? How, what is my fastest path to working? Trade school, learning learning a skill. So that's what they're doing. They're also taking advice from their, their boomer grandparents. How do you, what, what do you do a good job? They're close to their grand, the Gen Z's are actually very close to their grandparents. So they're saying, what are good jobs? And they say, oh, become a welder, become an electrician. People are going to need those jobs again. So that's what they're doing. How would that affect the workforce since they have such a short attention Well. Take longer to do the job, <laughs> no, we hope not. Yeah. <laughs> we hope not. They actually are open to, to what we want to teach them. So they're they're open to guidance and they know they're the first ones to say, hey, you know, I'm young, but you know, go ahead and tell me. So they're open to being taught. Okay. So I'm not concerned about them at all. So yeah, not at all. They're not gonna be as big a group. One of the biggest groups of all time are the, are the millennials. That is, you know, that is, that is huge, 45%. That's big. So that's where most of that, that competition is coming from, is from each other. So there's not as many plum jobs out there as there are millennials. So what they end up doing is they becoming more entrepreneurial, saying starting their own business. And they're willing to go, millennials are willing to go start a little business. You know, maybe they, they left college, they're not having luck joining the, the workforce. So they're saying, okay, I'm gonna go start, have this little startup, might be a, you know, something that's uh, online, okay? So they create this little, little job and they're like, okay, now I've made some good money with that. They are gonna go start up something else. They have a, an entrepreneurial mindset, the millennials do. So they do have a backup plan because they have to. So, Steve, you got any questions for me? Yeah, look, you start talking about career pathing a little bit, and oh. there's three parts to that yeah. that that we've been rolling out. Could you kind of discuss a little bit the three different components to career pathing yep. Yep. and kind of the universe and how how yeah. everything. Because uh, that's kind of interesting. One of the issues that we've had is keeping people interested once they're here. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you keep people uh, wanting to stay here and when someone else offers them 50 cents an hour or more? Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's that's been a lot of hopping the last couple of years, and, and we really want our people to feel like they're valued, and career right. pathing is one of those approaches to that. Right. And so we do, it's a three prong approach that we rolled out here at Hedberg. Um, the first piece is the performance management piece. So all employees will be receiving now um, consistent and feedback on an annual basis. We've moved everything, all performance management, to this first month of the year. It's quieter. We can concentrate on our employees and give them the feedback that they need so that they can go into the, uh, the busy season arm and ready, okay? Knowing what their goals are, what they can do at Heckford this year. The second piece of, <clears throat> piece of that is career pathing. So when you come in, I talked about this a few minutes ago, when you come in to, um, to Hedberg, you come into Hedberg as an employee, and then we have all the jobs that are, that are here at Hedberg, and you can go anywhere, okay? We aren't gonna say, okay, you come into City Desk, you're gonna always be at City Desk. You might come in at City Desk, you might take a left, you might go into sales, you might take a right, you might say, you know what, I am really interested in learning operations, so I'm gonna go work in the yard for a while. That's okay. It needs to make sense, of course, for everybody, but we wanna give the employees that opportunity to make those, to do that, okay? The third piece is the coaching and mentoring piece. I mentioned this too a few minutes ago. We have uh, uh, groups and some people together in terms of assigning them mentors. So
so people that have been very receptive to it on both sides. So that was that is actually that was I was more concerned about the mentors wanting to mentor than I, I was than I was about really the employees wanting to be mentored. So the employees are open to it. They feel it's going to help them in their career pathing and and in other areas of their life. And it also um, it's been good for our mentors. So. So those are the three prongs that we rolled out this year.